Well, as we turn the page to Romans, from Romans 11 to Romans 12, you're going to notice a real change in the book. Most of Paul's books feel like this, that the first part of them, in the case of Romans, the first two-thirds of it feels very theological. It's like Paul wants to begin by, by laying out proper understanding, proper way to think about the world. And man, did he ever in Romans. That Romans is the best source to think about, man, what is the doctrine of man? What is the doctrine of sin? What is the doctrine of salvation? How do we view Israel and the Gentile world? So many huge, heady things. In fact, I don't know about you, but I find myself reading the first part of Romans and having to say, okay, I'm going to have to go back and read this slowly. I'm going to have to figure out exactly what he's saying here. I'm going to have to meditate on this. So as you turn the page to Romans 12, like in most of Paul's books, you're going to be entering a real practical section of the book where Paul has built the foundation theologically and, and now he wants to flesh it out and say, if you understand God, if you understand the world, if you understand yourself, if you understand your fellow man properly, this is what you'll li your life will look like. So flip the page over to Romans 12, take a deep breath and take a deep breath for two reasons. First of all, take a deep breath because... There's not going to be anything hard to understand the rest of the way. This is all sitting right there for you. But the other reason to take a deep breath is this is kind of where we go from us reading the scriptures to the scriptures reading us. This is where we have to look, especially Romans 12, and say, hey, Paul is saying this is what a Christian looks like. Well, is this what I look like? This is the character of somebody who rightly understands who they are, who their fellow man is, who God is, how all this works. This is what their life is going to look like. So we have to, with great humility, read this chapter and say, this is a model Christian. To what extent would people say this is what defines me? So let's read with humility. And let's start with the very top of the book where Paul says, or the very top of the chapter where Paul says, so I urge you in light of God's great mercies to die to yourself, to become a living sacrifice. Now, what clear imagery to both Greeks and Jews who were both familiar with sacrifice at one time or another and had a picture of a lamb laying on an altar, dead, slain. And Paul said, look, this is the source of your life for you to be like that lamb, for you not to end your physical life, but rather to die to yourself. Die to your desire, die to your ego, die to that part of you that is self-promoting. Put it to death and instead live to Christ. So the rest of the chapter kind of fleshes that out. What if I was to really die to myself? What would I look like? Well, verse 3 says, I'd be humble. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. This is going to come up in book after book after book. Do you know what Paul's encouragement was to Christians? Stop thinking so much about yourself. That flies in the face of everything we've grown to, to value in our culture. Uh, we, we only value self-promotion. You know, we, we want to make a good life for ourselves and pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and achieve and achieve. And in the kingdom of this world, there's nothing wrong with that. We need Christians. We need high achieving Christians as much as we need anything else. But man, Paul says, look, in the middle of all of that, don't think about yourself too much. Think about other people more than you think about yourself. And say, in fact, he says, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned him. Your mind should be placed on faith. Your mind should be placed on God. Your mind should be placed on each other, not on yourself. Man, to what extent does that reflect who you are? Are you somebody that thinks about themselves? Or are you somebody that thinks about other people? Somebody who's meditating on God even right now? Well, then verse four and five say, not only would I approach the world with humility if I really understood who I was, who God is, who my fellow man is, not only would I approach the world with humility, but I would have a shared sense of work with the rest of the Christian community. For as one body have many members and members do not all have the same function. So we, though many are one body in Christ and individual members, one of another. So I need to look at my fellow man as important 
as vital to my thriving for the church to work well. We're all in this together. And then I need to do my part. Now, I need to be somebody who works in the local church, who is there for people, not going to church for myself, but rather going to church to serve, not building relationships so people will be impressed with me, but rather building relationships so I can be a blessing to people. I, I've, I've been living a Christian life long enough to know what my strengths are, and man, I'm going to use those strengths to make the church stronger for other to people to feel loved. And then starting in verse 9, man, we could take just hours and hours to check these off one by one, but I wonder if we could just read this and, and each time we could think, man, that character trait that Paul just outlined, does that describe me? Is this a way somebody out in the world, my friends, my coworkers, my family members, would they describe me like this? And Paul says, let love be genuine. Oh, there's so much talk about we need to love each other right now. But Paul says, you know, it can't just be lip service. It has to be service service. Let love be genuine. Abhor, hate what is evil. Man, do you hate greed? <laughs> do you hate hate? Do you hate the evils of this world? Do you hate that there's injustice? Paul says, you know what Christians are like? They abhor what is evil and hold fast to what is good. Man, I'm not even talking about evil in the world. I'm talking about evil in my heart. Do I hate what is evil, natural, fleshy, earthy in me and instead hold fast to what is good? Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Oh man, does everybody that comes in contact with me thinks, man, they really honored me. They really cared about me. I feel honored after that conversation. Do not be slothful in zeal. Ah, mean this stuff. Be a Jesus freak. Like, go get it. Be fervent in spirit and serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Man, if you just took those, these are, every one of these lines is a whole sermon, right? Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Are, are you in tribulation? Are we in tribulation? Well, then be patient. Think about other people more than you think about yourself and be patient and be constant in prayer. The thing that needs to be constant in our lives is prayer. Would other people look at you? If you honestly look at yourself, do you say, I'm constant in prayer? Bless those who persecute you. That's the way Christians would be. Bless and do not curse them. Imagine that. Somebody that you don't get along with, that you would bless them instead of curse them. Paul says, if you die to yourself, that's what it's going to look like. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. This is simple empathy. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Does that describe you? Or do you make relationships based on what you can get out of them? Never be wise in your own sight. Oh, man. <laughs> Isn't, aren't we just a culture of wise in our own sight? How rare is it to come across somebody, and I, I wish this described me more than it does, but how often, how rare is it to come across somebody who says, man, I, I'm still a learner. I'm a student. I'm not wise in my sight. I'm pressing into wisdom. If at all possible, as far as it depends on you, leave pe live peaceably with all, that you would say, look, I might not have only perfect relationships. There might be some brokenness there, but I've done everything I can to reconcile. I've done everything I can to be at peace with all people, even if it means I had to, uh, you know, be the one who got the short end of the stick, even if, even if that person's still mad, even if I'm getting blamed for things I didn't do, instead of defending myself, as far as it depends on me, I'm going to be at peace with all people. And then Paul goes on to talk about avoiding vengeance. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink and ends by saying, do not over be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Chapter 12 of Romans is something to be meditated on day in and day out, man, like print this out and put it in your office in a frame, like counter cross stitch this on a pillow. You know, this, this is the goal. Put this on your mirror and say every morning, go, man, this is what I'm trying to live like. 
If you die to yourself, this is the way your life's going to be. Hey, be love, Lighthouse.